with everyone in the world with their own view. Ever wonder if God has a view? And, and that's what the show's all about. What's God's view versus our view? Topics that affect our daily life. Empowering and inspiring. <laughs> right. To develop a heart, a kingdom mindset, you know. It's like, because God does have a view. Your host, Dr. Trudy Simmons, The Christian View. Hi, and welcome to The Christian View. I'm your host, Dr. Trudy. We take today's hot and challenging topics and we weigh it against the Word of God because God does have a view. I do want to take a minute and thank all of our viewers for writing in words of encouragement and sending in those prayer requests. They mean so much to us. And know that we pray for each email that comes in, each phone call we get. We are praying for you. Um, but my team looks a little bit different today. Um, we are doing a special program on the power of forgiveness. And I have um, a special couple with me today. Dr. Bruce and Tony Hebels. They are with us today. They started a program called Forgiving Forward. And so I just um, thought that would be a great thing to talk about today is how do we forgive and how do, what does it mean to forgive forward? So can you guys just talk a little bit about what Forgiving Forward means? Why don't you go well, No one in the Christian realm, no one in the Christian world is going to say we shouldn't forgive. Right. But the problem we find in most Christians, most churches, is that people don't really understand what forgiveness really is, and they really don't uh, know how to do it. And more importantly, they don't know why. Right. The, 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 we always have this concept that, well, it's going to make us better mm -hmm. if we forgive, which is true, and, and that's a, a decent motivator, but right. the motivation is really deeper. Because when we don't forgive as believers, we actually are say some, saying something about the blood of Jesus that we don't really want to say. Right. And so forgiveness is actually connected with the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I think, for, like you said, people think if we, if, if we forgive, we're, we're saying that the other person's okay. Yeah. But really what's happening is when we forgive, it's we're okay. Right, because when we apply the blood of Jesus to our wounds, we are the ones that get set free. Right. And so many people think that forgiveness and reconciliation are the same thing, mm -hmm. but they're not. Right. Because reconciliation takes two parties coming together in unity and if one person is not repentant, the one that did the wounding, they're not reconciled with the one who was wounded. So in order for reconciliation to take place, someone needs to forgive and someone needs to repent. And so that's why we can still be free when we forgive even if that other person has not repented. Right. And I think that's something that people need to hear, yeah. that we can be free even though the other person has right. not received it. The blood of Jesus is that strong. Right. We don't recognize just how strong the blood of Jesus is. It's it's not just for eternity, meaning eternal life, but the blood of Jesus is for the here and now. And so through our own story, mm -hmm. our own lives, what happened in our lives, the wounding we experienced, God made it very clear the power of his blood in our lives. It set us free and so much so, it was so impactful that um, he made it very clear to us that this is what we needed. This is why we were on the planet, was right. to take this message to the world. Amen, amen. So, Dr. Bruce, um, what would you say to someone who says, but you don't know what they've done to me? You don't know how bad I was treated? Well, I think my first response would be that then you don't understand the cross of, the, of Christ. Right. Because uh, basically, the blood of Jesus covers all sin, including the ones that wound me. Right. And so whatever it is they, uh, they may have done, the blood of Jesus is enough to satisfy mm -hmm. it. We actually have shared this message um, all over the world, and, and one specific place was in Israel. We were in the Dead Sea area. We had a, uh, a group of pastoral leaders from Israel, all Israelis, but half were Arab, half were messianic. Right. And even though they're all Christ followers, they were kind of like this because the sons of Ishmael and the sons of Isaac haven't forgiven each other right. for what dad did, mm -hmm. right? And they historically have come together and said, well, these are our grievances. What are you going to do to fix right. it? Which is almost always something behind that question that you ask. I, you don't know what they did. They need to do something. Right. And we say, whatever happened to you, the blood of Jesus has already settled it. And the torment that you're suffering from is not because of the wound. It's because you haven't forgiven. Right. And one of the ladies said, do I have to forgive Hitler? And the response was yes, yes, because if it doesn't work, if the blood doesn't work in the extreme case, it mm -hmm. doesn't work in the common case. Absolutely. So 
bottom line is, is the blood of Jesus enough or is it not? Right. And when we say it's not, it brings devastating mm -hmm. discipline to us. Right. It does. I mean, I think walking around with unforgiveness, Tony, it, it wreaks havoc in our body. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it brings sickness. It brings disease when we walk around with unforgiveness. I'm yes. sure you've seen that. We've seen it all the time. Mm -hmm. We've coached thousands of people and watched healing take place in front of our right. eyes. The first time it happened, it shocked me. Right. It's like, what is this all about? Um, but not just physical healing. We've seen people set free from depression, anxiety, all the addictions. Mm -hmm. if, there's, if you're addicted, if anyone is addicted to sexual activity, to drugs, to alcohol, anything, the root we believe is mm -hmm. unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. And so when you forgive, you're set free. And there's a whole thing we teach about that, why we're even in that position, but we've seen people set free from fear. I'm talking gripping fear. Right, we all experience right, fear, but right. gripping fear mm -hmm. from outbursts of anger, just ang controlling anger, um, paranoia, and all the addictions, like I said, right. anxiety, depression. We have found that forgiveness, unforgiveness, I should say, is the root of many of those things. Absolutely. I, I firmly believe, I have a great story of my dad who was walking in unforgiveness for a really long period of time. And when I was able to walk him through healing and forgiveness, Ooh. he just, he had this um, supernatural burning inside of his yeah. stomach that came out. He had, an, he had a bleeding ulcer at the time and the Lord just instantly healed mm -hmm. him. And so I, I, we know, we hear about the power, mm -hmm. you know, but I, sometimes I think people just don't believe it or they just don't want to let go. Yeah, and what people ask, why is it that severe of a discipline? Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus tells us in uh, Matthew 18 exactly why right. the forgiveness, bring, unforgiveness brings that kind of discipline. Let's talk about that when we come back. We'll be right back with more here on Forgiveness here at The Christian View. Don't go away. Welcome back to The Christian View. We're talking today about forgiveness and forgiving forward and what that looks like. And I have with me today Dr. Bruce and Tony Hebel, and they have created an amazing program on helping people walk through forgiveness. Before the last segment ended, we were started to talk about Matthew 18. So let's go ahead and jump back in where we left off with Matthew 18. Well, in Matthew 18, Peter asked Jesus a question. How many times do I forgive my brother when right. he sins against me? Is seven times enough? Well, Peter knew the Pharisees of the day said, if someone sinned against you twice, you had to forgive. Three times, if you want to be generous. After three, you don't have to forgive, probably shouldn't. Right. So when Peter was saying seven times, mm -hmm. he was doubling the maximum of the Pharisees and adding one. Right. Saying, did I do good, Jesus? Do I get a gold star? Right. right? He's looking for a pat on my back? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Right. exactly. And Jesus said, how about 70 times seven? Which is 490 times. Mm -hmm which is an unlimited number when you think about right. it, because if you get into the 460s and you're still counting, you probably haven't been forgiving. Right. You won't keep track that long. No, absolutely not. And then Jesus gives a, a, a story, a, a natural account to teach a supernatural truth and actually address Peter's question. Mm -hmm. And in this story Jesus shares, there's a ruler who came to collect debts from servants who owed him money. Right. And the first one owed him 10,000 talents. Mm -hmm. He said, pay me what you owe me. I don't have it then I'm going to throw you and your family into debtor's pr prison. Right. Please, please, please give me time. I'll pay it back. He didn't ask for forgiveness. He asked for time. Mm -hmm. But the ruler gave him more than he asked for. He forgave him the debt. Right. Well, that's a great story, but most people I know don't know what a talent was worth in that day. I didn't until I did the deep research. Right. And a talent is, is equivalent of 60 mina, and a mina was three months' wages. Wow. So one talent is 180 months or 15 years wages mm -hmm. for one talent. Wow. This guy owed 10,000 right. of them. That's 150,000 years yes. worth of wages. Please, please, please give me time. Yeah. <laughs> no one's, right, right. Right. At 50,000 a year, which mm -hmm. is a median income in the U.S., that's $7.5 billion that the ruler forgave. Right, which is... Un amazing. Amazing. Yeah, it's simply amazing. Well, one would think you might be in a good mood after that. Right. But this guy goes uh, uh, and you, find, you would hope. You would hope, right? right. But this I guy mean, finds a second slave yeah. or servant mm -hmm. who owed him 100 days wages. Right. And same appeal. Please give me time. I'll pay it back. Which is possible. Mm -hmm. But the first slave choked the second slave and threw him in prison. Yeah. And why do you think that is, honestly? We are more concerned about what we don't have than what we've got. Yeah. 
And so true. the ruler summoned him because the other slaves told on him. Mm -hmm. And he said, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you asked for mercy. Shouldn't you also have had mercy on your fellow slave the same way I had mercy right. on you? And then it says, and the Lord, little L, moved with anger, handed him over to the tortures until mm. he should repay what he owed. Well, what did he owe at this point? He didn't owe the money. Right. He owed forgiveness. Next. Yeah. Mercy to the next guy. Right. Or we call it forgiving forward. Mm -hmm. And the torture in that day was a man who was assigned to the jail who was skilled at exacting the greatest amount of pain for the longest amount of time without right. someone passing out or dying. Horrific discipline. Jesus leaves a parable at that point. Mm -hmm. And that's important. Right. Because he's no longer telling a pretend story. He's addressing Peter's question. He says, my heavenly father will do the same to you if each of you does not forgive your brother right. from your heart. The same what? Well, it can't mean anything but hand you over to the tormentor. Mm -hmm. Which is what unforgiveness does. Exactly. It torments you on a daily basis. But it's not just the unforgiveness tormenting us. It's not just an emotion. The t what we're speaking of here is it's truly a discipline God uses the enemy to torment us. Right, okay. So when we forgive, we're set free from the enemy's torment. And that that's word, what he talks that about. That word torment right. is used 18 other times in the, in the Greek New Testament. With maybe one exception, right. every other time it's used in connection with hell or demonic activity. Mm. So literally, God is giving authority for demonic forces to torment us when we don't forget. Right. And Tony shared earlier a list of the tormenting. Yeah, that's how we see it up, outplayed. See it. Right, right. But the moment we forgive, and, and Trudy, we could give you thousands of stories of instantaneous freedom. Right. Are some of these on your website? They, some of them okay. are. Mm -hmm. and, and, and our website has a, uh, uh, sermons and, and other things that, okay. that kind of help with that. But amazing breakthroughs. Marriages who, one lady came to us and said, a couple came to us and she said, I'm only here because the judge said we had to see one other person. Mm -hmm. Can we get this over with? Right. Three hours later, the same lady looked at me and said, uh, you're a pastor, right? I said, I've been accused. <laughs> Can we renew our vows with you now? Oh, praise the Lord. And that's our normal. Right. Because the torment is there, mm -hmm. not because of the wounding, but because of the unforgiveness. And it's there as a discipline. And when right. we choose to forgive, the tormentors, by the Father's command, leave. Leave. And the reason is because forgiveness is at the core of the gospel. Amen. Can't cut the gospel anywhere it doesn't bleed forgiveness. Absolutely. Because on the cross, when Jesus died, he said, it's finished. Mm -hmm. What was finished was a payment for the sin debt of the world. Amen. All, every sin ever committed by anybody anywhere on the planet was paid for by Jesus mm -hmm. on the cross. So when we say God may forgive and I won't, we're saying God may be satisfied with what Jesus did on the cross, but I need something more. Right. So do you think when you're talking about forgiveness, it's more of a supernatural act? How would you, how would you feel about that? I would say when we forgive, it's a choice. Mm -hmm. It's not a feeling. Right. We worked with a lady in Israel who had just been stabbed off in a bus, and she acted like she was dead till the, her, what do you call attacker. it, attacker went by, and they were shooting people, and all this was going on. And she called out to God as she was stumbling off the bus because she was by a window or a door that was glass that had been shot open, and so she was able to get out. And she's on the road, and she says, God, would you please someone to help me? She's bleeding everywhere, a 76-year-old. and. God said, I won't send someone to help you until you forgive. Mm. So she had to make that choice. Right. But once she did, immediately there was a man next to her side, took her to the hospital. She turned around to thank him for what he had just done, and he was not there. So it's a choice that's followed by a supernatural. Amen. Amen. I love that. We'll be right back with more here on The Christian View. Don't go away. Welcome back to The Christian View. We're talking today about forgiving and forgiving forward. When we were closing the last segment, I asked the question, is forgiveness a supernatural act? And you had said such an amazing, told an amazing story and just said how it is a, it's a choice yeah. followed by a supernatural transaction. It's a, it's a, it's a spiritual transaction. Mm -hmm followed by a supernatural impact. Right. That the moment we forgive, the tormentors leave, and there's, it, it's, the tormentors are in the supernatural realm, and they leave, and God's peace comes in. Right. It's instantaneous. And, you know, do you see, do you find that when people do trans, when they do forgive, that their whole demeanor changes? Like Absolutely. you see a whole new, yeah. yeah. 
Well, if tormentors leave, you're gonna be better. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of a deal. It, I mean, I've, I've experienced it in my own life, but for those out there listening, who maybe just tuning in, and they're like, well, I, I can't forgive. I don't know how to forgive. How can I forgive what they've done to me? I mean, I think about Corey Ten Boone. Remember her story with the, the, um, the abuser who killed her sister mm -hmm. came up to her, and it was, it was right. the power of the Holy Spirit. But how do everyday people walk out forgiveness? Well, it's a very simple protocol. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we've got it on our website. Is it called the guide? You can download it from the guide. And it's also this. It's you have bookmark, this right. bookmark. It's a, it's a, yeah. I carry this bookmark with me wherever I go. My good friend um, Jan Ziga gave it to me, and so I carry it with me wherever I go. Yeah. And yeah. so very quick, very quickly, the first five will tell you, which mm -hmm. is the the kind of the how-to part. The first one is you recognize that uh, in the Matthew 18 story, we're the first servant, not the second. Right. So it's thanking God for forgiving you. It's recognizing. Absolutely. Just. Gratitude changes our perspective on everything. Mm -hmm. And so when we thank God for, the, for saving us, it's a, it's a small thing to then extend that forgiveness to someone else. Right. Then you repent of your sin of unforgiveness. Because mm -hmm. unforgiveness is not a bad idea. It's a sin. Right. And it's, I think, the most harshly disciplined sin we as a believer can And I don't commit. think people view it as a sin. I know. I think uh, they view it as a protection me mechanism yeah. versus right. sin. But it's exactly the opposite. Right. It's not protecting us. It's, it's inviting tormentors. Right. The way we deal with the sin is we repent of it, mm -hmm. which says what I did was wrong. So, God, I was wrong to dishonor your blood by not forgiving. Right. And that cleans, that cleans our pipe. That gets mm -hmm. us where the Holy Spirit can actively communicate to us. Then you ask, who do I forgive and for what? Right. When I ask that question mm -hmm. and when I'm coaching somebody, right. I always say it this way. Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, would you please bring a name or a face mm -hmm to their mind or their heart right. of who you want them to forgive and for what. Because so many things we bury, we don't remember, right. but God knows where the root is, that he knows where the unforgiveness began, mm -hmm. and it's important to get to that root. So I ask God to do that. It's incredible what he does in that time. Oh, and I think, yes, it, I think yeah. it's important on that, that you don't forgive the person as much as you forgive the wound. Absolutely. Right. Now, the wound is associated with the person, so you forgive the person for the wound. You don't say, I forgive my dad. For what? Existing? He's created in the image of God. Right. No, you forgive dad for what he did or did not do. Absolutely. The wounds he inflicted upon you. Right. So Holy Spirit is the one who knows that. Mm -hmm. And is it good for people to list those things out? Absolutely. So I forgive my dad for, right. and it's not just the action. So I forgive my dad for being an alcoholic. Well, that's one thing. But it's deeper when you say, I forgive my dad for being an alcoholic and embarrassing me in front of my friends and making me feel like I could never bring anybody right. home. And I was never protected because he was not there for me. Mm -hmm. I was afraid of him for instilling fear in me that I've carried to this day right. for not being the man and the example of God the Father to me. You mm -hmm. get into the deeper places and the emotions of how it made you feel. Right. And as so it's from my heart, I choose to forgive right. this person for these things, as okay. Tony just listed. Right, absolutely. And it's good to do that because we don't need to leave anything left. We need to be in the details. Right. And, and where you were wounded. We forgive from our heart, right. Matthew 18 mm -hmm. said. And that's where we were wounded. So we need to go into those heart places mm -hmm. that are difficult. Um, like Bruce said, this, these protocols are simple, but they're very hard. Right. Because they go into that place that's wounded. And man, if you can go there and just pull those arrows out of all those wounds, those words that were spoken, mm -hmm. I forgive my dad for saying I would never measure up. I'll never be good enough. Right and we put those at the cross, then the freedom will come. But it's hard to do that right. because we're human. Which is why it's often best to have someone help you mm -hmm. and while we're training people how to coach And them. that's what you do. You have a training facility yes. that trains people to go mm -hmm. and walk other people through mm -hmm. through healing and forgiveness. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So as we wrap that, she, we, we forgive each offense from our heart. Then we, tra as she was saying, we transfer the debt to the cross. Right. We say those words. I declare this person is no longer my debt. I, mm -hmm. I transfer their debt to the cross where Jesus paid right. it all. And then the, 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 the validator is you bless. Right. Because there's power in our words. Yes. Absolutely. And that's why if we speak it into the atmosphere. Well, if you, if you, if you mm -hmm. can't bless someone, you haven't forgiven them. Right. Because unforgiveness wants them to pay. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness wants them to be blessed, wants them to receive. Absolutely. And, so uh, we see that yeah. we actually witness the torment leaving at the point of blessing. Amen. It's incredible what we witness. And I think it's great that you teach people to speak it out. Yep. To mm -hmm. speak it out. To, all has to, to be say it clear. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you, they're able to bless. Well, this even goes along with James 5. I don't think most people put those two together, right. but we've seen it where confess your sins one to another so you may be healed. And this is a sin. And so you confess all this and you watch the healing take right. place. I love that. And so 
tell me just how the Lord is using both of you to further the kingdom with this ministry. What are you doing? You're going around the world. Yeah. Well, we have a center called our Forgiven Ford Freedom Center in Fayetteville, okay. Georgia, where we live. Uh, but we are also traveling and we're training people wherever. We've got people in Dallas. We've got people in Birmingham, other places that are trained and actually coaching people. We've been overseas. Our book is now in five languages. We're in not only English, we're in Hebrew, Arabic, Spanish, Korean. Wow. It's now in the in the final process for Russian, okay. which isn't interesting. God, this was all launched before the invasion, mm -hmm. right? And isn't it just like God to create a forgiving uh, forward translation into the aggressor's part, not right. the, you know, because there's mm -hmm. woundedness on that side too. Absolutely. And God's heart is for the wounded and wounded people wound people. And so that's happening. Several other translations mm. are kind of being asked about. So, mm -hmm. Tony, what would be one thing you would tell someone who's who's listening today or watching today and says, "I, how do I take that first step? How do I take that mm -hmm. first step to forgiving someone who's hurt me?" I would say to get on your knees and to repent to God that you have maligned His blood. Um, Hebrews 10 talks about that when we don't forgive, it's like we're stomping on the blood of Jesus. And so I would say just to get on your knees and repent to Him and say. I don't, I, I don't even know if I can do this. I need help doing this. But Lord, I know, I recognize right now that your blood is enough for whatever has happened to me. And so I'm yielding myself right now. Make me willing to be willing to walk through these protocols and apply your blood to the wounds of my heart. Amen. I think that is so, so powerful. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back more here at The Christian View with Forgiving Forward. Don't go away. And welcome back to The Christian View. We've had a great discussion today on how you can forgive forward. I want you to check out Bruce and Tony Hebel's book. It's called Forgiving Forward. And go to their website. It's forgivingforward.com. They have so much information to help you forgive and to walk in that freedom. They also offer seminars and workshops for churches. You want to make sure that you connect with them. And God loves you. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in to The Christian View. Be blessed. Bye-bye.